Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're all really, really well and had a super weekend. So today I thought I would share with you my everyday makeup routine. I've been doing pretty much the same makeup every single day for a few months now and I haven't shared it with you and today, it's Monday morning, I just felt like escaping my emails for a few minutes and I thought why not film my makeup? So um, it's going to be a very informal chatty video, I literally just set the camera up having decided to film this video about two minutes ago, no professional lighting on or anything so just really chilled out, really informal. Um, but hopefully interesting for you guys. So I'm gonna start off by telling you what I've already done to my skin. This probably won't come as a surprise if you've been watching my videos for a little while, um, but I'm still absolutely loving the Darfan Lumia Essential range. First of all, after using um, a micellar water on my skin, so when I wake up, I use a micellar water and then I usually spray on a toner. At the moment, I'm loving the Trilogy Rose Hip Spray On Toner. And then I usually just go downstairs, make a cup of tea. I come upstairs and I put a serum on. This is a Darfan Lumia Essential Illuminating Oil Serum. I've spoken about this before, so I won't go into it, but I just love the very uh, gentle glow that it gives to my skin. And then I follow that up with a corresponding moisturizer, which is the Illuminating Oil Gel Cream. Really good if you know that your skin wants a bit of oil, um, but you don't wanna put an actual oil on your skin. Really love this. And yeah, you've heard me talk about that before. So I put the two of those on. And also an eye cream. I switch it up a little bit with my eye cream. I love the Neostrata Intensive Eye Therapy, which I got from the Wigmore Street Pharmacy, uh, which is, on Wigmore Street in London, I find this really good. I suffer from eye bags, so this is a really good one. Um, and I also, when I want something a little bit richer, a little bit more hydrating, this one is more creamy, it's the Liz Earl Super Skin Eye Cream. So I put Neostrata on this morning, because it's Monday, and I haven't had my coffee yet, needed a little bit of de-puffing, so that is what I have on at the moment. For the base, I actually don't wear a primer if I'm just working from home, um, no particular reason why. If I'm going out, I would use a primer, but today it's just a working from home day, it's Monday, so I'm skipping that step out. Today I'm going to use the By Terry Cellular Rose Moisturizing CC Cream. My skin just seems to love this, it feels like it's really good and nourishing on the skin and it's a really lovely light base. So I just use one pump of that on the back of the hand and then splodge that onto the skin, having left my moisturizer to sink in for about 10 or 15 minutes. I'll usually get dressed in that time. Um, finish my coffee, etc. And I'm going to use my Clinique, um, I think, I don't know what the official name of this is, just blending brush to blend that in. Normally I would use uh, my mirror on the wall, but I'm just using this amazing Tom Ford palette to blend it today. So I find this brush is really quick at uh, blending the makeup in. It doesn't give a totally flawless finish, so if I want to, I'll go in with my beauty blender afterwards but this CC cream just gives such a nice glowy base. It's not cakey at all. If I was filming, I'd put something, well, I'm filming right now, but if I was going to be spending a day doing filming, I'd probably use something a bit thicker, like the Rimmel, um, what's it called? Match Perfection. This is what I wear when I'm filming, if you guys ever wanted to know. I will put a bit of the CC cream over my lips. Um, don't know why, I just always do. <laughs> and then I take it all the way over like my brow bone trying not to get too much in my hair. Ever since I went even blonder, um, I really notice makeup in the hair. It's a bit of a blonde hair problem. If anyone knows any solutions, let me know. So while this hasn't covered up all of my red marks, I've got a little bit of um, spot action going on over here. I'm just gonna tie my hair back, actually. Um, yeah, the CC cream doesn't hide all blemishes, but it just gives a really lovely, more even base, which for me, if I'm working from home in the daytime, is more than enough. So, uh, what next? I'm gonna put on a little bit of concealer just under my eyes. Again, not every day would I do this, but just for you, I'm gonna put some concealer on. Ones that I really like include the Origins Plant Scription. This is on its last legs. I'm gonna have to chuck it out soon. It's getting a little bit old. Um, and also the Clarins Instant Concealer for tired eyes. I don't know if that's just some clever naming of the product, but I feel like I always have tired eyes. So this is one that I do reach for. I've got way too much on my finger. I would recommend like an eighth of a grain of rice. You really don't need that much at all. As you can see, it's quite pigmented. So I pop that on under my eyes um, and then I'm gonna blend this in with a beauty blender. I've gone through quite a few beauty blenders recently because 
Dexter has decided that he really likes to shred them, so um, they are rather expensive to have to keep buying, so I'm going to have to be more strict with Dexter and keep them out of sight, but as you can see that concealer has just sunk in really really quickly, really really, really really quickly, and then I just, while I've got the beauty blender in my hand, just make sure that there are no swirl marks um, from the foundation or CC cream, which to be honest there aren't normally because it is just a tinted moisturiser, so yes. Really nice, easy, natural, glowy base. During the winter I do find that my lips get a little bit dry and at this stage they usually want a bit of comforting. So I have a few options that I reach for regularly. Uh, first of all this is a Burt's Bees Lip Balm Crayon and it does give a little bit of colour. Then I love the Nooks Rev de Miel, I feel like I only discovered this um, a whole lot later than everybody else, like at the end of last year. Love it, but it's quite gloopy so I prefer to use that at night. In the day, my favourite is the Chantecaille. This is the Lipstick Rouge à Lèvres in the shade Mirage. It is a lipstick, but I still find it really balmy and just really comfortable to wear. And I absolutely adore the colour of this one. So having applied that, my lips feel lovely and hydrated, but also I just love the colour. If I was to do a 2016 Beauty Favourites, this would definitely be in there. Um, speaking of which, do you guys still want to see one of those? It's January the 8th today, I don't know if I've missed the boat, but if you're interested in a huge yearly favourites of everything that I loved last year, let me know because, you know, never too late, I could still do that. So now that my lips are feeling a bit more hydrated, I'm going to move on to the eyebrows. So this is not my full eyebrow routine, just something to give them a little bit more shape um, for the everyday situation. I get a lot of you guys asking why I feel the need to fill in my brows after I've had them microbladed, and that's because on my skin the microblading faded quite quickly in a few places, so while the overall shape of the brows is so much better, like I would be comfortable going on like a beach day for example without putting anything on my brows because the shape really is there thanks to the microblading. I do have brow makeup so I do prefer to just give them a little bit more structure. So my current favourite brow combination is a Bobbi Brown eyeshadow. This one is the shade Grey. You can basically use any brown eyeshadow. If you're looking for a high street uh, brow kit I recommend Rimmel Brow This Way I think it's called. And then just whatever brushes you prefer. I actually prefer my Anastasia Beverly Hills one because it's super thin. The, uh, the slanted brush is just really, really thin, so it gets a really nice, precise shape, but that's fallen down the back of my dresser and I can't be bothered to get it, so I'm using an Eyelier one at the moment. And then this is just a spoolie, so I brush out the brows to get a little bit of shape, and then fill in any patches where I want a little bit more intense colour using uh, this eyeshadow. So mostly I'm just focusing on this area here, where my brow hair is a little bit sparse. Also, I had my brows shaped and um, tinted at the Benefit, Benefit store on Carnaby Street, and I just find that makes so much difference. On some days, when I haven't had my brows done, I just can't do anything with my brows, like they look so rubbish. Um, but now that I've had them tinted and shaped, I just find them a million times easier and quicker to do. Okay, so that's super quick and easy. I spent about 20 seconds, if that, just putting a little bit of colour in the brows, and now I'm going to set them with an eyebrow gel. Again, there's a few that I really like. My favourite is Benefit Gimme Brow, although I appreciate that it's a little bit pricey, and I also really like this one, which is Rimmel Brow This Way Brow Styling Gel. Um, what I do really like about Gimme Brow is the fact that the brush is really small, and you can actually, uh, this is what they always do when I get my brows done by them. They back comb the brows, so if you really do want that big bushy brow look, which I really like, um, I wish I had more brow hair so that I could do it a bit more intensely, but they back comb the brows and then brush them up. I will attempt it, um, but yeah, I wouldn't normally make this much effort on an everyday brow makeup routine. Please excuse the sunlight beaming in from behind me, um, but that's great because it means I can do some vlog photography today if it's going to be nice and bright. So I'm just taking this spoolie and really just ruffling it through the brows, um, and that's given a little bit more volume to the brow shape. 
And that's pretty much all I would do for my brows for an everyday makeup look, nothing too snazzy. But either way, I'm wearing my Topshop jumper that I featured in my January sales haul part one from Topshop. I just love it, this material is so soft, it's so nice for working from home days. Um, so yeah, just in case you're wondering what I'm wearing, it's that one. Next, I'm going to move on to eyeshadow. I'm not actually sure I've talked about this before, um, but I absolutely love it and I use it so much. This is my Galan um, eyeshadow in the shade 04 Hey Nude. It comes in this like gold bar box, which is totally over the top and extravagant, but I love it. Inside it looks like this, so you've got a big mirror. I still haven't taken the sticker off, it's very unlike me. Satisfying moment alert. Oh, I don't know why I find that so satisfying. Uh, so yeah, and then it did have its own little brush in there, but I found it totally useless. It fell out once and I don't think I even bothered to pick it up. Um, but then the eyeshadow itself is this long bar here. It's a very neutral skin coloured colour. I find it very uh, good for just creating a really lovely base. Some days this is all I'll apply, some days I will build up. The mirror is the perfect shape and size for application. And then I use a big, uh, this is the Zoeva 221 Luxe Soft Crease Brush. It's probably better for buffing, um, but I find it so big it makes it super quick to apply the eyeshadow. So just sweeping that all over the lid and then blending it to about halfway up. Um, the bit above the lid, don't know what that's called. So you can see it's added a little bit of colour to my eyelid, but without being too intense. And then I just make sure that it's not got any harsh lines, just blending that in a little bit. And to be honest, what I do next just varies on day to day, depending on how I'm feeling. I recently was clearing out my makeup drawer and rediscovered this beautiful palette from Becca, and I'm really loving these shades in particular. The palette is called Ombre Rouge Eye Palette and once again really beautiful, very natural colour selection if you're like me and you love really warm tones on your makeup, nothing too extravagant then this is a really lovely one. So I'm going to go in with this slightly pinky brown shade, just a little bit on the same brush because I can't be to switch them up. And then I'm just going to trace the crease and this will add a little bit more definition, add a little bit more um, depth to the eye makeup look but still super easy. I am not a makeup artist, wouldn't even say I'm particularly skilled at doing my makeup, so if I can do this on an everyday basis, then you sure as heck can as well. So that's just so easy. I'm just going to blend this out just to make it look even more natural. As I said, if I was not filming, I probably wouldn't even do this step. And then to make this even softer, I'm taking a clean blending brush. This, ooh, I think this is a fake Bobbi Brown one that I got on eBay. Um, but yeah, it's clean, so I'm just going to use that to blend out any lines so that it's really lovely and soft for my everyday look. When I say fake Bobbi Brown, it doesn't have like Bobbi Brown branding on it, but I mean, obviously, it's been created to look like a Bobbi Brown brush eBay is so good for makeup brushes, by the way. If you don't want to spend a fortune, obviously I'd always recommend Zoe for brushes because they're amazing, but if you do want a serious bargain, then eBay is the place to go. Okay, I'm happy with my eyeshadow. Next, I'm going to go in with mascara. I don't wear eyeliner on an everyday basis. If I did want to intensify my eye look, then I would probably even take a really small eyeshadow brush and just put a darker shade under my lash line, but I don't do that most days. So next, I'm going to use mascara. You guys probably know this already, but I'm still absolutely loving the Elizabeth Arden, uh, oh my god, I think I always call this the Showstopper Mascara. I've just seen that it's actually called the Grand Entrance Mascara. I've been wrong for like half of the year, last year, so sorry about that. Elizabeth Arden Grand Entrance Mascara. I've tried so many mascaras, I've chucked out so many mascaras recently because none compare to this. It really does just separate, lift, volumize everything, but without being clumpy. So perfect for an everyday mascara look, evening mascara look, I just love it. And I always curl my lashes first. I'm using um, Shu, oh no, Tweezerman Rose Gold Lash Curlers. I do have the Primark version as well, which are a fraction of the price and to be honest, they are identical. So just a couple of squeezes. I usually squeeze in two separate places to really lift as opposed to bend the eyelashes. And then I feel like this mascara is only going to last 
maybe another week or so because it's pretty much empty, almost dried out, but look at that brush. This is a stiff brush and it hurts like hell if you get it in your eyes, so always be super careful with this. It's really bristly, really long bristles, but it's vicious. So just trying to position that as close to my actual eyelid as possible, giving it a bit of a wiggle, and then I put a teeny tiny bit on the lower lash line. I don't want to add too much heaviness, um, but just because my lower lashes are blonde, they just need a tiny touch of mascara. And then I'm going to flip the brush round because it's arched and the brush bristles are different lengths on either side. I'm going to flip it round to give it a little bit more volume. While I've got your attention, I feel like everybody is talking about this YouTube algorithm change and it means that a lot of you may not be seeing all my videos so if you do want to keep up to date there is a little bell button next to the subscribe button which hopefully you've already pressed and if you don't want to miss any you can put the bell button on just click it and then it means that you'll be notified when I upload which surely is the point if you're subscribed to someone but YouTube decided to mess everything up as they like to do so if you don't want to miss anything hit that little bell button down there um, yeah, I feel like so many YouTubers have been noticing a real drop in their views. Some people have even been unsubscribed from people's channels, which is very frustrating. Um, hopefully that's not happened. Double check that you are still subscribed if you want to be. What else have I got to chat to you guys about? Oh, you keep asking to see more of Dexter. I'll go get him in a second so that you can see him. He really is the best dog in the whole world. We met another sausage dog yesterday on the common that was identical to him, like literally identical. And he made friends with them straight away. With other dogs, he'll sit there and bark and try and be ferocious. But with other sausage dogs, he just, he knows that they're the same and makes friends with them. So that was really lovely. Okay, mascara is looking good. Uh, what next, what next? I sometimes put a little bit of powder on just to mattify. Today, skin-wise, I don't hugely feel like I need it, but... I will put a tiny bit on just to show you. I love the Chantecaille HD Perfecting Powder. I've got it in bronze and in um, neutral. If I feel like something a bit lighter, I use a press powder. I haven't really figured out which one is my favourite. I like the Bobbi Brown Retouching Powder. Um, I also really like the YSL Souffle Duclette. It's so big though, it takes up so much space in my makeup drawer. I adore this one, it's a pressed powder. It's the 4-in-1 Pressed Mineral Makeup Broad Spectrum SPF 15 from Pure. I have a Swarovski version. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not too fussy with powders. They're just a few that I reach for regularly. Mostly, I'll try to apply powder um, in a more targeted way. I don't want to mattify my entire face. So I'm taking a Real Techniques Bold Metals 300 brush um, and I'm just gonna put that on there and then pat it under my eyes. This is where I don't want my makeup disappearing and on my chin. I find that it just helps to set the makeup and diminish any potential shiny patches. So I'm really more targeted with this than splodging it all over my face because I don't want to be totally matte. So hopefully that'll help my makeup last a little bit longer. Oh, hello sunshine. And then finally, I think I'm gonna put on some bronzer. My favorite Overall bronzer is the Hourglass one, but I can't see it. So, as I've got it here, I'm gonna use my Tom Ford. This one I find really good for every day because it's not too pigmented. You'd think from Tom Ford it'll be like, boom, really glamorous, big pigmented powder, but it's not. It's ginormous, I love the packaging, it's a really soft bronze. So, I'm gonna take that on my Charlotte Tilbury brush. Be right back. Ooh, I had to lean for that one. Okay, this is my favourite bronzing brush of all time, Charlotte Tilbury. Haven't really found any that I prefer to this. I lost it a little while ago and had a bit of a spaz attack, um, but amazingly, the PR sent me a new one and I was so grateful. So thank you, Charlotte Tilbury gals, if you're watching. So I just, I don't go too crazy, have a big old swirl, um, and then I always, always start on the cheekbones because if I do have a bit too much colour, it's really good to blend there gives your face a little bit more shape and then to be honest I don't want any lines so I just blend it all in. Quick tip if you do want to have a little bit more of a contour to your face just um, squeeze your bronzer brush in like this and then you can create a bit more of a line. Ta -da! I'm not the queen of contouring but um, that's just a little something something that I like to do. So I really just 
frame the face, use my bronzer as a face shaper and also a warmer upper for the complexion which we all need this time of year. Has anyone got any holidays booked? Please tell me if you've got any warm holidays booked. I want to dream about warm destinations, hopefully booking somewhere soon with Chaz, but nothing is confirmed yet. So yeah, now I'm just blending like crazy. I don't want any lines, I want it to be really natural. So just blend, blend, blend. To be honest, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I would say this is what I do to my face on an everyday basis. Obviously, if I'm literally at home doing nothing all day, I won't put this much effort in, but, okay, this is gonna make me sound so shallow, um, but if I'm gonna be doing stuff like Instagram stories or Snapchat stories or vlogging, then I don't wanna look like a scary Mary, so I do put on a little bit of makeup. Also today, I'm going to the doctor shortly, um, I'm gonna be popping into town, so again, I just, I like to have a little bit more makeup on, it makes me feel more comfortable. If you uh, go to school, go to uni, or just have a job that doesn't require you to be perfectly made up, I feel like this amount of makeup would be perfect. I have this makeup routine down to a fine art, and I can probably do this in, sorry I've got a really itchy nose, I can probably do this in about two to three minutes, although don't um, quote me on that, because I'm sure if I timed myself it would be more like five. But still, this is the routine that I do pretty much every single day. Um, I am really rambling now because um, no one else is home and you guys are all I have to talk to. Oh, I'm gonna go and get Dexter. I did promise that I would show you him, so be right back. <sighs> Here he is. <laughs> I went downstairs looking for him. I thought he was gonna be in our bedroom um, because Charlie doesn't allow Dexter on our bed, but I do and um, he loves to just snuggle up in our duvet, so I thought that's where he was going to be, but actually he was downstairs. Hence why I'm out of breath. Oh, is it weird that I even like his dog's breath? I feel like when you love someone so much, you love everything about them, whether that's their smelly feet, or their smelly breath, or anything else that's smelly. But no, he was downstairs by the fire. We've got our little gas fire lit at the moment because our heating is broken again. I feel like we have the worst boiler in the whole world, but um, yeah, no heating, no hot water in the house at the moment, but on the plus side it means I go to the gym more because I have to shower at the gym. So, swings and roundabouts. But yeah, here is little Chappie. He's very fluffy today because yesterday we took him for a walk on the common and um, it started to pour with rain so much and he got filthy, he was so dirty, he was covered in mud and being a little boy he decided to roll in it and be super naughty so we had to bath him in a cold bath, I felt so bad um, but then we gave him lots of cuddles and treats and warm blanket cuddles afterwards so he's really fluffy because he had a little bath yesterday and he smells so good <laughs> so yes, if you wanted to see Dexter here he is, my little handsome chaperoonie oh stinker, god he yawns all the time when I put him on camera hard life for a little boy, isn't it? So I hope you guys have had a really good start to your week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little chatty get ready with me. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna say goodbye now. What have I got to do today? Gotta go to the dock shortly when Charlie gets back, gets back from the gym. And then I've got a few blog posts to write. I'm going to edit this video, get it up for you guys tonight. And then I'm gonna have um, another wardrobe declutter get rid of a load of stuff to hopefully go to a car boot sale in a couple of weeks. So that's the plan of action and also tackle my inbox, which is always good fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you later, Dex. Oh, I'm gonna put you down. And oh, <laughs> oh, he's such a scrub bag. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not already, then please do hit that subscribe button down there um, and thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I hope that I will see you very soon. Bye.